Daf Mem He Amad Aleph will begin Daf Mem Dalad Amad Base last line. Mashay Samayim let some of the Mishnah said if a person drinks water for his thirst, he makes a shahako. Lafuki Mai, what is this emphasis that he drinks it because he's thirsty? So where does he not make a bra? Amaravidi Baravin Lafuki Laman de Chanka Seumsa. Lafuki excludes a case where a person was choking on something, he drank the water just to be able to clear his throat and to remove the blockage. There he's not getting benefit from the water per se. There he doesn't make a bracha. If he drinks the water and he's getting benefit from it, so then he makes a bracha. But over there, where he's doing it just to, to relieve the, clear the blockage and uh, and relieve the, the pain, there he does not make a bracha. So from here, Tysus brings out, and we pass in halach as, as well, if a person is drinking water, he's taking medicine, and he's only drinking the water to be able to swallow the medicine, he doesn't make a bracha. But if he's drinking it because he's thirsty, then he makes a bracha on water. Other types of beverages, Tyson says, is that where he does get a physical hana from it, then he makes the bracha, he does make the bracha, because he's getting the benefit from the taste of those of those beverages. But water, it's only if he drinks it for his thirst, if he takes medicine with it, he does not make a bracha. Rabbi Tarifin Naimar, Boy Nefoshis, Rabbi Zuk Hasran, Rabbi Tarifin says he makes a bracha, Boy Nefoshis. So Taisus mentions over here that Rabbi Tarifin is not talking about the bracha achreina. Rabbi Tarifin is talking about the bracha rishaina. Tanakama said the bracha rishaina on water is shahakol. Rabbi Tarifin says the bracha rishaina is Boy Nefoshis. Amrle Rabbi Ba Rav Chana Levayi Amrle Rav Yisa Rav Yisa Velcha Samai What is the halacha? What bracha do we make? Amrle Puk Chazim Amadavar. Go see what the minig is. What the minig is. What people are custom. What do they do? So the minig is, is of course that we make a shahakal. We make a shahakal on water, and if he drinks it for his thirst, and the bracha achreina is a brayna foshes. If he is drinking it just to take medicine. He doesn't make a bracha rishayna, and as Taisa says, he doesn't make a bracha rishayna, he doesn't make a bracha achreina either, in that case. Hadrun la ketzim mevork, and 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 hadrun la ketzim mevork, If three people ate together, there's a mezumen, they have to be mezumen, they have to bench together. So they have to say nevork, they have to say nevork uh, together, and they have to make a zimun together. Now, the basic principle that the mission is going to outline is that's only if they ate foods that are permitted to eat. If they ate macholas asuras, then there is no zimun. There's a machlokis rishayim. If there's bechlal, even benching, most rishayim hold that there's not even benching bechlal. But there's certainly no zimun on macholas asuras. So the mission is going to list different types of foods that he eat where there is a zimun and where a zimun does not apply. If a person ate demai, demai, so it's produce that he bought from an Amaritz, which the Chachomim were machmir, that we suspect perhaps the Amaritz did not take the proper maestras, so it cannot be eaten without being mafresh the maestras. So if he ate demai, um maestrishin should not let truma also, or he ate maestrishin where the truma was taken, at this point we're assuming means truma was taken, the truma's Meiser was taken, so he ate Meiser and Rishon where the Trumas Meiser was taken. So apparently it would seem to be that if he ate Meiser Rishon where Trumas Meiser was already been removed from it, was separated, then it's completely mutter. There would seem to be no Chiddush over here. Or Meiser Shani Vehektish and if to Meiser Shani, in order to eat it, it has to be redeemed. You have to be pited. Same thing with Hektish, it has to be pited. And once you're pited, it becomes mutter. So again, when we'll see in the Gemara, what's the Chiddush over here? If they've been redeemed, it's mutter. So it's like any other food which is permitted. Or a servant, a shamus that ate a kazayas. Now he can be joined together with the group. Or a kusi mezaminalav. In all these cases, there is a zimun. Now, so the first case of demai, the question is, why is it really permitted? Why is there a zimun? Demai is food that you can't eat. Why is this not in the category of Machal Sasuras? And we'll see in the Gemara. The second cases where it's Meiser and Risha and Shenitl Trumos or Meiser Shani Hek Shaniflu, the question would be the opposite. It would seem to be that they're completely permitted. What's the Chiddush that there is a Zimun? 
And then there is a question of the shamas, is it permitted or not? And a kusi, when we uh, would be have to, we'd be assuming that the Tana holds that a kusi is considered a yid, so you can make a zimun. So all of these cases, this category, this grouping, the foods are considered permitted foods, and therefore there is a zimun. However, if he ate a person ate tevel, where the trumas and mices were not separated. So that's food that's not permitted. It's machal zasuris. So achol tem u maisa rishin shaloin nitu trumas. Or maisa rishin where the trumas maisa has not been ruled. The maisa shen even hacked the shaloin nitu. Or maisa where it was not been redeemed. Vasham shachal, asham shachal, pachs me kazais. Or the servant ate less than a kazais. Vanachra goi. In all these cases, the foods are not permitted. Or there is no kvias. The shamas ate less than a kazais. You can't make a zeman. Right, if there's less than a minimum amount of food that he had together, or there's no zeman together with the guy, ain't mezamin alav. There's no zeman in this case. In these cases, you can't make a mezuman together with women and with avodim with slaves, with avikani. Ad kama mezamin. How much food has to be eaten together where you say there's a zeman? Tanakama says ad kizayis. A minimum of kezais on all amount of food. Rabbi Yudamer, at kebeya, he says, a beya is required. So the more we'll discuss this in greater detail. Minahanimil, the basic question the Gemara asks, we're saying that there is zima. Shlesha shachl kachas or zima. What is the makor, what is the soras that there is a mitz of zimon that you have to bench together? Nevorach. We'll praise Hashem and, and, and talk about the greatness of Hashem together. We'll do that together. So there's a zimun. It's done as a group. Rabbi Vahu Mehacha is similar to Rosh from a different Pasuk. Yishem Hashem Ekra, have a goyro, lelekeinu. Together, you, with me, will have a goyro lelekeinu. How do you know what a person makes a bracha when you answer amen? It should not be in a louder voice than the person making the bracha. So we bring this down because it's another drasha from this pasuk. God Hashem iti with me. So it has to be on the same level, and the same uh, the voice has to be in the same level as the one who makes the mavara. So God will Hashem eat it and Rami Shmoa Yachtav, and we'll do it together. Amar Rav Hashem and Ben Pazi Minayin Shein Matargim Rishoy Like Be A Koyle Yisim Ne Koyle. In a similar vein, how do we know that when a person gives a drasha in those days, the Talmud Chacham gave the drasha, and the Matargim was the one who heard it from him and broadcast it in a loud voice to the tzibur. So how do you know that he should not raise his voice more than the one who is the kaira, the one who's saying it over to him? It says Moshe will speak on the Debris. <clears throat> Only the first first two Debris were said the Klausel heard it directly from Akarish Baruch, who the rest of the Debris of the Saras of Debris, Rajlam said it to Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu, he's the one who was, the, so to speak, the Metargim. He's the one that said it out to the Tzibur. So it says, Moshe Yadaber, Velakim Yanenu Bekol. It says, Bekol. Now it's, it could have said, Hashem Yalakim Yanenu. Obviously, it's Bekol. Why does it make an emphasis, Bekol, with that sound? Shein Tamad Loim Bekol, it really doesn't have to say Bekol. Uma Tamad Loim Bekol, why does it tell me and emphasize Bekol? Bekol Hashem Moshe. It was at the same, at the same level, the same Kol as Moshe Rabbeinu. That's why it says Bekol. So we see from here that the Metargim cannot be Magbiya Yosem in Akair. And Taisu has asked the question, what do you mean? It seems to be just the opposite. Over here it says, Elikim Yonan Bekol. Now we're saying that the Metargim cannot say it louder than the Kaira. And here it's saying that the Kaira, the Rabbi Shalalim, said it Bekol, Bekol Shal Moshe. It seems to be just the opposite. So Taisa's answer is, he says, that really Rabbi Shalalim, speaking to Moshe Rabbeinu, could have said it in a quieter voice than a voice that Moshe Rabbeinu had to hear, not louder than that. But why did he say it? Bekol, bekol, shalmaisha. 
because Moshe Rabbeinu had to say it in a loud voice so that Klal Yisrael could hear it. So therefore, he also had to say it in a loud voice. He also saw that it should be in the same level as Moshe Rabbeinu. It should be in the same volume as Moshe Rabbeinu, and not and Moshe Rabbeinu should not be higher. In order for it to be that the Metargim is not saying in a louder voice, the Rabbi Shalom had to have the voice of the Rabbi Shalom louder to match, to equate to the volume of Moshe Rabbeinu's call. He's not allowed to raise his voice more than the Kaira. And if he can't raise it to the level of the Kaira, then the Kaira should lower the volume so that they should match. If two people ate together, Pligi Rav Rav one says, if they want to, they could. There's three, it says, but a two, if there's only two people, it's a rishus, they could. The other one says, no, they can't. It's, you have to have three. If you don't have a minimum of three, you can't. Two cannot make a zimun. So now we learn the Mr. Lazam, three people who ate together, they're Mechuyev for a Zima. So the Mishnah says three. Shalaisha in Shnaim Loi. It's only three, not two people. So her it's a kasha on the man who says two. More answers now. Ah, some chayva harishus. The Mishnah says three people, Shlaisha Shah Khayyavim, the Khayyavim, they have an obligation. But the Mandama says two, two, it's a rishus. It's voluntary. They don't have to. But he holds it's permitted. Tashma, let's bring a right from the following. Shlisha shachlo kachas. Three that ate together. Chayav lezamen. They must be mezamen ve'in rishayim lecholet. And they cannot split up. Shlisha in shnaim loi. It's only three that cannot split up, but two could split up. Mar says, shiny hasam to kavul chayvim ikara. Three that ate together cannot split up. But two, they could split up. Now, the more saying three cannot split up. Well, if two is also a zimun, why can't they split up? Let three split up, and they'll still be able, the two remaining still will be able to have a zimun. So doesn't that show you that two are not eligible for a zimun? The more answers, no. There is shiny hasam to kavul chayv mikara. When there's three, now they have a chiyuf. If they were split up, according to the man Dharma, that two can be mezamen, the remaining two could still be mezamen, but not pateris chiyuf. If they ate three together, they have a chiyuf. Now, if one separates, they voluntarily, according to this man Dharma, could make a zimon, but it won't have the same level of a zimon where it's a zimon of a chayva. It's a voluntary zima. Once they had an obligation, they cannot be mafkia that chayva and transfer it into a rishos. Taisus asked the kasha, a glaring kasha, of course they can't split up. Whether two can be mizamen or not be mizamen, what's the Gemara's kasha? Of course they can't split up because if one is, is uh, departs from them, perhaps the remaining two can be mezaman, but the one who leaves, he won't have a zimun. So of course they can't split up because the one who leaves, he's not going to have a zimun. So what's the Gemara's kasha to begin with? Taisa's answer is, it's mashma. It doesn't say that one can't split up. It says, it says that they cannot be mechalik. means that none of them can split up. The, the the Isser on splitting up applies not only to the one who won't have any Zimun at all, it also applies to the two remaining, that they also, it can't be split up because of them. It doesn't say that Echad, ain't a, that one, it says Enam Rishayim, it means it's going on all of them. Because there's a problem over here, there's a Havkos, a Zimun, that would apply to all of them. So the more answers in Hanami, according to the Mandamra, who says that two could be Mizamba, that's only Rishus. They can't split up because even the remaining two, they're Mavkia, the Chayva Zimun, from upon them. 
If one servant of Shamash is serving two people, he is allowed to eat with them. Normally, a person uninvited is not allowed to eat with the other people. But here, it's assumed that they want him, that it's an implicit invitation because they need him for the Zimun. So he's allowed to, even uninvited, eat with them because it's assumed that there's an invitation. Even though permission wasn't granted. But however, if he was serving three people, he cannot eat with them. There's no implicit invitation because they have a zimun without him. So they have to give him rishos, explicit rishos for this. So if you tell me that shnayim is voluntarily they can make a zimun why is there an implied invitation for the shamash why do they need him they can make a zimun without him if two can make a zimun the more answers no shiny awesome no that's different because they it's an implied invitation because even if they're two and according to this mandar two can make a voluntary zimun but they want the higher level of zimun they want the zimun of a chayva so there's an implied invitation it's assumed that he's invited because they would want to have upon him the chayva zimun and therefore he's allowed to join with them